What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So, we're gonna check out eight times WWE fans legit walked out during the show. Now, I'm very interested to see what actual shows did uh, WWE fans say, you know what? I spent all this money on this ticket, whatever the case may have been, spent money on parking, probably maybe bought some food from the concessions, or maybe even bought some merch. You know what? I don't like what I'm seeing. I'm out of here. So I, I definitely want to check this out to see which actual uh, events <laughs> did uh, WWE fans say, you know what, I'm done with this. Appreciate all the love and support you guys have shown on the channel. Let's get right into this one. From time to time, WWE delivers a match or a segment that is so loathed by the fan base that fans decide to legitimately leave the arena. Instances that this is rare, as after all, fans have spent a considerable amount of money to attend yeah. a WWE show and they want to get their money's worth. Sometimes fans like to protest what they are seeing with their feet, and whenever fans walk out of a WWE show, it's always major news, as it's a clear sign that whatever WWE are presenting simply isn't working. Join us now as WrestleMania looks at eight times fans walked out of a WWE match or segment. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos, and follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists. Also check out our new channel, WrestleMania Shorts. Number eight, Ryback versus Kane. Okay. Whenever WWE visit the UK, the UK fan base expects a special show. For sure. The UK fans are amongst the most passionate and loyal fan bases in the world, and for the longest time, the UK fans were treated as afterthoughts by WWE. A pay-per-view taking place in the UK seemed like an impossibility, and fans had to settle for Raw and SmackDown tapings, uh -huh. which, whilst exciting, were always problematic, as they were prone to edit the fan noise in the arena. Yep. When WWE taped SmackDown in Liverpool, England in November of 2014, the main event of the show saw Ryback take on Kane. Wow. The fans were furious that this was the legitimate main event of wow. the show, so they naturally began to leave early. This was barely passable as a live event main event, and there was evidence that WWE didn't care what was presented on SmackDown at the time. <laughs> Thankfully, a decade later from this total dud of a matchup, they tried to treat their UK fans considerably yes. better as UK-based pay-per-views are the norm, with events such as Clash at the Castle and Money in the Bank 2023 all receiving critical acclaim from fans. Number seven. Yeah, that that doesn't sound like a fun main event for us to even watch at home. Back, even, back then, even. Like, nah, bro, I... I don't care to see corporate Kane on my television, to be honest with you. So, <laughs> Sheamus confronts Roman Reigns. The WWE product in late 2015 wasn't in a good place. Attendance was on the way down, and uh -huh. WWE fans were outright rejecting plans to make Roman Reigns the face of the company. On the road to the TLC pay per view in the aforementioned year, they would have a segment main event raw between the then WWE champion Sheamus and Roman Reigns. Due to fans having zero interest in seeing this confrontation, there were a number of reports that fans began to leave wow. early. The segment itself wasn't awful, but the problem was that Reigns was at his very worst. Yeah. Reigns as a generic this baby. This was a suffering succotash, Roman Reigns. We didn't want that. His face wasn't working, and WWE's stubbornness in modifying Reigns' character was alienating a considerable portion of the dedicated fan base. Number six, Ronda Rousey versus Shayna Baszler. The 2023 SummerSlam Damn. card was stacked with top matches such as Roman Reigns versus. And this lead up, the the lead up, even though it was kind of just thrown together, they had like a nice little promo package. Like it, it, it seemed like it was important. I just wish they would have built towards it more because it just kind of happened or whatnot. So, but the match itself was not entertaining at all. Jey Uso and Brock Lesnar versus Cody Rhodes. Unfortunately, one match on the card completely killed the excitement of the crowd, and this was the MMA rules yeah. match between Ronda Rousey and Shayna Baszler. The match was completely lifeless, and you could literally hear a pin drop in the stadium. Listen, listen it was widely reported on social media that fans immediately got up and left for the concession stands wow. when Rousey's music hit. This was a stark contrast to the fan interest in Rousey when she first arrived in WWE. Yeah. Sadly, her character was at a point of no return with fans, as they had no desire to see her perform. Number five. Damn, I remember us watching the match live on stream. That was the lowest point of the entire show. There, no one cared. And once again, I said that the promo package was cool. They're they're back and forth. I was you know interested. I just wish they would have built it out a little bit more because it just literally came out of nowhere. And when the match was you know about to happen. No one, no one cared. And then you see all those people like, ah, right, well, this is restroom break, concession stand break. 
Damn, bro. Bianca Belair versus Sasha Banks. It came as a huge surprise in 2021 when it was reported that fans were leaving early during the main event of night one of WrestleMania 37. Now, this I did not know. In question, so this Bianca was a good Belair match. Challenged Sasha Banks for the SmackDown Women's title, and the match received universal praise. Yeah. It was a classic matchup that warranted the main event slot. Sadly, it was reported by Dave Meltzer in the Wrestling Observer Newsletter that a lot of fans left prior to the match, stating, Several noted that a lot of people left on night one prior to the Banks vs. Belair main event. I wasn't there and reports varied, but reports as the match started indicated that the number was high and it was very visible right on camera in the early part of the match. This came as a huge shocker, but it could have been due to the travel arrangements of fans in attendance. This event took place during the COVID-19 era, so it was possible that fans wanted to avoid the mass rush of people exiting the stadium. Another Maybe, I don't know, but this was an enjoyable match, so I'm very surprised by this. Possible theory is that fans were disconnected with the match due to the build. The build for the match was notoriously terrible, and oh, yeah. WWE did a poor job in telling a compelling storyline heading into the WrestleMania encounter. Number four, match Alexis good, Playground with Charlotte Flair. Oh, the reaction no. to Alexa Bliss's supernatural oh. character was a mixed bag. Some fans thought it was refreshing, while some believed that WWE were trying to transfer Bray Wyatt's piece, immense uh, popularity Bray, onto Alexa Bliss. During an infamous promo exchange between Bliss and Charlotte Flair on Raw in 2021, it was reported by Dave Meltzer that up to 1,500 fans walked out of the wow. arena. The segment received poor reviews, so it would make sense for some fans to leave, but that number of fans leaving seemed far too drastic. The news of Meltzer's claims quickly spread around the internet, and this actually led to Bliss reporting to Meltzer on Twitter by stating, Sorry Meltzer, or whatever, you can't get cloud off our segment. Move on. Hashtag stop lying. Hashtag literally didn't happen. Oh. And hashtag you're embarrassing yourself. Number three, Roman Reigns. Question is, who, who's telling the truth there? I mean, that segment is cringe-inducing. Definitely would go to the restroom or get something to eat during that segment because I just... What they were doing with Alexis Bliss character, it just it got carried away way too much. Like she literally took his gimmick and then just ran with it. So I don't know how true this was, but I wouldn't have been surprised if people were like, "Yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, I'm gonna just give me something to eat or something. Maybe go to the restroom because this ain't it." Reigns versus Randy Orton and Seth Rollins. The build to WrestleMania 31 didn't exactly light the world on fire. Even though the pay-per-view itself was incredible, the build just lacked effort and it was evident that WWE were just trying to go through the motions. Traditionally, during WrestleMania season, tickets for Raw and SmackDown uh -huh. are hot commodities. Yet in 2015, fans were less than enthusiastic about attending shows. This was made clear during the Roman Reigns vs. Randy Orton and Seth Rollins match on Raw, as it was reported that fans began to leave during the match. The poor build to WrestleMania 31 uh, combined with fans having enough of Reigns' stagnant character uh -huh. had reached its absolute boiling point. And even with it being WrestleMania season, fans had simply seen enough. Number two. And it's crazy because Randy turning on Seth was a, a pretty cool moment. So I can understand. I think people were more so frustrated because we all assumed that Roman Reigns was going to be the new champion. That's that's literally what it was. We we just assumed Roman Reigns was going to be the new champion and he was going to beat Brock Lesnar. Little did we know, we was actually wrong. And that uh, WrestleMania that year actually turned out to be pretty enjoyable. So we was wrong on that front. They they put they gave us a good show that WrestleMania. John Cena vs. The Rock Part Two. When WWE announced Cena vs. Rock Two for WrestleMania 29, the WWE audience had a ton of questions. They had just marketed their initial encounter as a one-in-a-lifetime yeah. matchup, but now WWE were running the match back for a cheap buy rate. Uh -huh. There was a sense of disappointment with the match announcement, and the desire to see the match again was very slim. This disappointment was highlighted in the poor WrestleMania 29 buy rate, as well as uh -huh. reports that fans began to leave the show early during the match. The match itself was insanely dull, as a WrestleMania 28 encounter had a spark to it. But this match was just a carbon copy of their prior match, and yeah. the fans were pretty much silent for the majority of the action. There was also a strong push from fans to see CM Punk inserted into the main event of WrestleMania 29, mm -hmm. but instead, they had placed Punk in a match with The Undertaker. The match between Punk and The Dead Man was so well received that fans after the show had suggested that they'd put the wrong match on last. Yeah, no, that was a fun and match. One, uh, the, uh, the, the Undertaker versus CM Punk match, I enjoyed that. And the lead up and the, the feud they had, that was actually pretty enjoyable. They, they did their thing. That possibly 
probably should have been the main event of that WrestleMania. Once they was about to run it back, we knew the finish. We knew the finish. We knew it. John Cena was going to win. We knew it. I was like, ah, it's not there. It's not there. It doesn't have that same magic it had the first go around. So, understandably so, people didn't really care. Uh, I didn't really see too many people walking out, though. <laughs> That's the one thing. I, I didn't see it on the camera. Maybe people did walk out. Maybe people weren't even really as interested to even go. But I didn't see too many people just actively leaving. So, I don't know. Roman Reigns vs Samoa Joe now Coming out of the 2018 Backlash pay-per-view, all everyone could talk about is how hundreds of fans left during the main event. Uh... The main event of the show saw Roman Reigns take on Samoa Joe and whilst the match was somewhat of a dream match, there was nothing at stake so the match just felt completely pointless. Yeah. Additionally, fans were unbelievably bored of Reigns and they wanted nothing to do with him, especially in the main event slot of a pay-per-view event. The match was a total bore as the two were evidently distracted by the fan response as the fans that were left would heckle the two with chance wow. of CM Punk, beat the traffic and even this is boring. Wow. WWE executive Rodog would reflect on the crowd response to the match on his podcast and he had some rather interesting comments to make. Look, truth be told, it bothered me. I don't know if it bothers Vince personally. I can't imagine from a businessman's point of view, which is how I try to look at it, but my personal feelings get in the way all the time. But like, it's the first thing I said was you paid your money. Like, you paid that. You can do And John Cena used to say that the best you paid your money, you can do anything. You want to go when you come here? I mean, within reason, you can leave. You can chant this thing. You can chant that thing. You can do whatever you want or turn your back. Or well, we got your money. And that's what we were shooting for. It was reported at the yeah. time that this was the eye-opener that McMahon needed and from this point onwards he was going to realize that his current presentation of Reigns just wasn't working. Unfortunately, nothing changed for the next few years as yeah. WWE and McMahon specifically continued to present Reigns in the manner they saw fit. But they have it folks. And that's the problem. And, you know, Road Dog, you know, he definitely has a point there. He can, you know, definitely can be like, yeah, you know, you paid your money. So, you know, at the end of the day, you can say what you want or whatever you know you want to leave or chant whatever but we have your money but at the same time it's like the interest you may have the money at that particular moment but then you start losing the money because people stop coming to the shows because it's like well we're tired of seeing this we're tired of seeing this particular guy get shoved down our throat we don't really care for his character it's hard to invest into it you know and uh it's, it's just one of those things where it timing is everything vince had the multiple times of being able to see people are not into this version of the top guy that you want but he was just stubborn for the most part you know <laughs> he was stubborn and and um financially in certain situations they could have made a lot more money than they did if he they actually would have turned him heel, changed up his character, did something to freshen him up. Because if he's going to be a top guy, you got to find some way to make the fans care and be interested. You know, they care if they're interested. It's more money for you and everybody else. So, hey, it, it, it's, you know, it happens. But right now we, we're seeing some of the best attendances, uh, best um, PLE, um, I, well, it's, it's different now how they model it they do it through peacock and stuff like that but you know there's a lot of people that are interested in the product you can see it in the numbers and the house show attendances and you can see it in just the amount of people that are watching these big pay-per-views you can see it all over the place so obviously you know they're doing the right thing people are getting what they want out of wwe they're they're getting the matchups for the most part that they want they're getting the characters that they want it seems like they're listening to the fans just a little bit more um and parts you know that you kind of got to give credit to triple h on that you know i think he's more in tune with what the wrestling fans would want to see on television than vince was um when he was in control of things so things are on the up and up for sure i don't really see too many people walking out of these shows even though sometimes they can definitely be a little bit boring some of the matches and storylines you can kind of not care about but it seems like more people are staying at these shows when uh you know not at triple h is more in control so comment down below let me know if you've ever been to a wwe show wwe event you know even if it's a house show and you saw 
like people leaving you know whether it was for whatever particular match it was or whatever segment that was on being shown you saw a lot of people actually leaving to either go to the concessions or just leaving the show let me know down below if you've ever personally seen that or experienced that but i appreciate all love and support you guys shown on channel go to 150k and i'm still young speed the youtube wrestling champion of the world appreciate y'all kicking in with me see y'all next one peace